So, welcome to our third episode in the series of Housing Awareness Week. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the traps and pitfalls when it comes to student houses. I'm joined by uh, somebody who's had her fair share of mishaps when it comes to student housing. Uh, So, Georgina, tell me about your experiences of housing. In my second year, I moved into a house with 10 people and the estate agent asked us um, if someone would mind taking charge of all the people so they didn't have to speak to 10 individuals, they'd just have one person. And I said I would be that person and they said you can take charge of all the bills and um, make sure that there's a name on the account and I set up a bank account for the house and put my name on all of the bills from gas, electrics, water, everything. Um, And they're all paid by direct debit, thinking it would be simpler. But of course, no one ended up paying and all the county court notices came to me. Um, And when I went to the estate agent to help me, they said there was nothing they could do because my name was on the contract. I had to get all the parents involved and the money ended up coming out of all of our deposits and um, because we'd signed a joint contract it was a, a joint liability um, and managed to get it paid that way but they were so uncooperative um, and luckily it didn't go on my record because that could affect you for the rest of your life if you got bad credit um, so I managed to get it paid somehow but it, I would just advise no one to do the same. I also went to ask a landlord what traps he thought students should avoid. You must make sure that the, uh, that the deposit is protected by a tenancy deposit protection scheme. There are several. Uh, the one I use is called mydeposits.co.uk and I'd recommend anybody to go and check that website out. Uh, it does offer some good protection for mm. everybody involved. That's the first thing. Um, if a house is a house of multiple occupation, an HMO, then it needs to be licensed as such. It's something you should ask. For a house to be requiring a licence for uh, multiple occupation, it has to be either five bedrooms or three floors. All houses, irrespective of whether they need HMO licensing, should have uh, an annual gas safety certificate and and a five yearly electrical safety certificate. These are all things that you should ask about when you're in the house. To start on deposits, uh, how, how can you be sure that you're going to get your deposit back at the end of the tenancy? Uh, that's a very good question. Fortunately, over the last few years, the government has a national tenancy deposit scheme, and that really has cleaned the situation up quite significantly for all tenants, including students. Landlords actually have to put deposits or post deposits with a particular scheme, mm. and they have to tell students which scheme it's posted with uh, within a certain amount of time. And if there are any queries or problems at the end of the tenancy, there is arbitration available through that tenancy deposit scheme and um, students should get the correct amount of money back. Sometimes landlords will simply offer a verbal, pardon me, a verbal commitment and we say that you definitely should be signing something. Now yeah. the common form is an assured shorthold tenancy and that's really what we'd expect um, landlords to be offering. Um, that will be that should be something that's properly drafted that has signature points on it that makes it very clear how much the rent is and when it's payable it sets out the terms and conditions in plain English in a very simple and straightforward way and also does tell you exactly who the landlord or the agent is and who is managing the property um, okay so, so if there's any doubt uh, a group of students can come and see you even though it's not a property that you're actually managing. I'm very pleased to see them and in fact um, it's a learning curve for us as well because there are some times when we see things that we've never seen before and they are they can be quite remarkable and we're very happy to, uh, to let students know how to deal with things like that. Well Martin, thanks very much for your time. Uh, it's been a great help and I'm sure it'll be much appreciated. Thanks very much George. Thank